Exploited axonometrics are some of the most beautiful things that you can create in your career as an architect. They portray a lot of detail in a very artistic way. Today, I'm gonna to show you exactly how to create one of the best axonometrics you can in ArcCAD 25. What's going on guys, my name is David Tomich and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, firstly, thank you so much for joining me. On this channel, we talk all things technology and architecture. It's my purpose here to share as much valuable architecture knowledge with you guys as I possibly can. That usually comes in the form of architecture tutorials, app reviews or innovative technology. I do my best to share as much as I possibly can because I know how secretive the architecture industry is. So today we're talking about axonometrics and how to create some very beautiful, very simple axonometrics in ArcCAD 25. Before we turn around to these two screens, I want you guys to simply drop a comment down below and let me know what resources you are really lacking. Are you looking for things like new templates? Are you looking for things like checklists and guides? Are you looking for things to help you with Photoshop or Illustrator? What are you looking for to help you better yourself as an architecture student or as an architect? I really wanna know what resources you guys need. So please let me know in the comments down below and let's get started. Welcome back to another tutorial today, guys. Today we're starting with the Australian Select template because that's what's available to me. Feel free to start with whatever is available to you. We're gonna be creating an axonometric that is so simple, so clean, and yet so beautiful that can be done in, I'm hoping, under five minutes. So let's get started by just simply creating the basic shell of what we're gonna do. We're gonna create a small little bathroom and produce an axo from that. So let's start by using our wall tool. We'll, the wall tool, we always wanna make sure all our layers are correct, so external walls, outside face, what kind of wall we're using, again, doesn't really too matter in this case. I'm just gonna go stud partition. Now let's start by clicking once in the center of the page, holding shift and pressing the D button. I'm gonna go two meters for the width of the bathroom. I'm gonna go about five meters for the length and I'm gonna finish it off in a nice perfect square. Now we're gonna start by opening up our objects tool, looking for a toilet is one of the easiest things to start with. So water closet 25, here we go. Let's say we want a wall mounted unit and we want a nice one, let's say something oh, like that, doesn't really matter. We look at it in 3D, we want that in wall system and we like these buttons, those buttons are quite nice, so let's leave it as it is. And that's basically all we have to do for the toilet. We're just gonna change the object layer as well. We'll just call it MEP plumbing for now, clicking okay, dropping our toilet in. I'm gonna duplicate that toilet by pressing Control D and then the Control button again, holding Shift will align it perfectly. So now we're gonna press Command T, open back up our object settings. We're gonna type in shower. Let's use cabin shower or shower cabin 25. Looking at it in 3D, we most likely wanna just have one wall activated. So if we go to this one, it'll automatically change our shower head to a rain head. Coming back to our cabin type, we probably want a custom cabin. We want it to be two meters long. We want it to be about a meter wide. I'm not gonna go into too many settings here. It's more so about that AXO, so adjust these settings however you see fit. I don't want a tray because I don't like the tray, and then I'm just gonna change that to black. So again, just clicking OK. Now we're gonna rotate this around by pressing Control E, holding Shift again, rotating it 90 degrees. Control M will allow us to flip it the opposite way, so now our shower is at the top, and then we can move our toilet a little bit closer, Okay, so let's copy that toilet across once more, Command T, and go to Vanity Basins. We're gonna use this multi-basin. For today, again, just creating something simple to show the purposes of that axonometric. We're gonna remove all of these, change the thickness to 300, change the depth to 200, and make it a rectangle. Probably only need two basins in this instance and we can change our tap styles, we can do whatever we like, it doesn't really matter too much. So I'll change the lines to black, drop it in, and place it in our bathroom. So now our bathroom's probably too big, I'll move that 450 millimeters away from the center of that toilet, ungroup by pressing Alt G, and then Control D again to move that wall in. 
And lastly, I'm gonna press Command I to link all those walls together and jump back into 3D to see what we've got. So at the moment in 3D, we have our shower screen with our rain head shower. We have a grab rail at the back, which we probably don't need. So I'm just gonna quickly jump in here and turn that grab rail off. So that grab rail is now gone. We have our toilet, we have our vanity basin. Overall, we have the beginnings of an axonometric. There's a lot of things missing here to make it quite nice. First of all, I wanna copy this vanity basin over and just introduce a mirror. So by going mirror 25, we have this mirror here. I'm simply gonna drag it and drop it into this wall and adjust it in 3D to see if it works for me. So I think that mirror is pretty much good. It's gonna be quite large. We'll drag it in line with the top of that. And then we're simply just gonna adjust the settings a little bit more. We don't want it to be that thick. Let's make it 20 mil thick. Now, what you'll notice is it's quite ugly. It's quite not artistic at all, especially when you want an axonometric. So what we'll do is select all our walls, pressing Alt G to activate our group, press Command T, and then we're gonna change the external wall structure to tiles. Let's use tiles 150 by 150 and press OK. So we have very small tiles on the wall, but it sets the standard. We're gonna come back to our floor plan and simply draw a slab below. So if we select our slab, we can use all sorts of different things. Let's go this structural concrete with tile finish and let's draw it from edge to edge. Now coming back into our 3D, we'll see we've drawn our tiles below all the way our walls and we've got our walls completely surrounded in tiles. So floor to ceiling tiles in this model. Now this is where it gets a little bit different and a little bit tricky and we really want to be able to create the best axonometric possible. So what we're gonna do is actually change a few materials and create something new. So let's start by going into our surfaces panel up the top. If you don't have this activated, come to window, toolbars, attributes, and that will activate this palette here. Let's start by opening our surfaces palette and we're gonna replicate glass. So let's find glass blue, perfect. So we're gonna use this glass blue and adjust this material here to be a nice uh, tranquil blue, a really beautiful light blue that's gonna be appealing in your axonometrics. So how do we do that? Let's start by adjusting some of these settings. Feel free to pause it anytime in this video and screenshot it as much as you need to make sure your settings match what mine are. So first, let's start by changing the surface color. My surface color is defaulted here. That's the blue we're gonna be using. I've created it before. I've adjusted it, I've used it, I like it. We might even change it just a little bit to, there we go, just the tiniest, tiniest little bit. So 132, 240, 215, pressing OK, changes our surface color. Next, we wanna adjust our transparency all the way to 100%, and this as well, all the way to 100%. We wanna keep our emissions at zero, and 100%, 100%, 73. I don't recommend this always for glass. It is just for this specific tutorial. Use the regular glass object for your windows and things like that. However, I'm just finding that these settings work really, really well. Now we can click OK and jump across to our fills. So by default, you have 25%, 50%, and 70%. What we wanna do is go new and create a simple 10% transparent fill, clicking OK, simply changing that to 10% and going OK. Now, probably should have done that before, so we'll jump back to our surfaces, go to our glass and change our background fill to 10%. Now, we click OK and we wanna start changing some of the materials in this model here. So let's open up our shower, go to our material settings and simply just change our cabin glass to the glass blue we just created. It'll change the material of that cabin. And then we also wanna change the material of this mirror that we've created as well. So we'll change the glass from glass to glass blue and click OK. Now we wanna come back into our floor plan. We wanna get our marquee tool. We wanna to have the single floor selection. We wanna marquee the outside of those two walls and the inside of these two walls. Right click, show marquee in 3D. 
So now what we've effectively created is a 3D marquee of that space, removing those two walls so we can see internally and actually look at what we're trying to create as an AXO. So what we want to do is quickly just extend our screen, move it into the crop zone and find this detailed shading selection. We want to click on this 3D styles, which will open up our 3D styles window. So what we're going to start by doing is duplicating this technical drawings. So let's go new technical drawings. We'll just rename it to AXO and then click OK. What we want to do is repeat these settings exactly as I have them. So transparency we keep on, but we reduce it to hidden line. We don't want a monochromatic model and we want to change our sky from blue to white. So both areas are nice and white. We want as in photo rendering, rendering activated and we also want our vertical hatching activated. We don't want our sun shadows on. We don't need them. So we're going to turn those off and we're going to reduce all of these lines here to one. So now by clicking OK, you're going to see our entire model change. So now we're significantly closer to getting this to exactly how we want it. What we have to do is change the actual line types of these objects so they aren't pink and green. We want them all to be black lines. So we're coming into our settings, going to the floor plan and section overrides and simply just making all the lines black to make them stand out properly. And there we go. So far we have our axonometric set up. It's looking really, really nice. And, but it's not an axonometric at all yet. It's still a perspective view. So there's only one real final step now before we finish off this axonometric. And that's simply going into view 3D options, 3D projection settings. And we're gonna go parallel projections, axonometric, change it to our isometric axonometry. And it doesn't really matter about the sun position at all, clicking OK. If I double click my scroll wheel, it's gonna bring up that axonometric. So if you wanted to go ahead and change the tiles to make them bigger or larger, you can do that very quickly and very easily. So let's change these wall tiles here to a 300 by 300 pattern. We can do that by coming into here, finding our grid 15 by 15 that was created. And simply let's just change that to 300 by 600. If I click OK, you'll see those tiles instantly change to bigger tiles. There's a much better way of doing that, but I just simply wanted to demonstrate the ease and effectiveness of that AXO. And that's pretty much all there is to this axonometric. It is a very simple process. Once you set up these layers and you keep the new object, you keep this new 3D view, you can basically create one of these axonometrics by marking any one of your bathroom designs. If you want to take it even further, you can put a channel drain along the side of that glass screen and maybe a floor waste in underneath this vanity basin to make it even more realistic and you can manipulate it even more. If you wanted to turn it into an exploded axonometric, you can simply zoom out, click on one of the objects, drag it up as far as you need to, drag out each individual item and place them in perfectly arranged spaces. Then all you would do is save that 3D view and draw some 2D lines in your layout book to make that an exploded axonometric. Incredibly simple, incredibly quick, and definitely something that more people should be doing. Anyway, that's all for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something very quick and very easy in this Monday's tutorial. It was not very hard, a little bit of setup, but once you've got it going, it is so easy. If you enjoyed it, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below and don't forget about the like button. The like button genuinely helps this video grow with the YouTube algorithm and helps this channel grow. So I'd appreciate it if you smash the subscribe button and smash the like button. And like always, I'll see you next Monday.